all. I hope everyone can hear us. This is uh, one of our first webinars, so we are not professionals in this by any means, so we hope that you can all hear us properly. If anyone's having any issues, please send us a message via the, um, the chat tab and we can try and fix that as we go. Um, but I guess, first of all, um, we want to do an introduction so that you know who we are. Um, we both work at Edmund, obviously. My name's Taylor. Um, I'm just checking this chat as I go in case someone can't hear us. Oh, yep, we're good. Thank you, Steph. <laughs> um, so my name's Taylor. Um, I have been at Edmund since 2018. Um, my role here at Edmund is a service delivery manager. Basically, I oversee um, some, some portfolios in terms of youth, disability, um, across a couple of states of Australia. Um, I also assist the other service delivery managers here um, in terms of client related matters. So we all work, work in a really close knit team, I think. Um, but yeah, I've been here for about four years. My name is Brooklyn. So I've been at Edmund for almost 10 years now. I originally started off in the recruitment team. So I worked in recruitment for about four years. I then transitioned over to a service coordinator working with the Queensland youth team. So from then I spent about five years doing that and I've just recently come into the service delivery manager role. So my title at the moment is service delivery manager. I work closely with Taylor and oversee teams people um, in the youth space in Queensland. Yep, awesome. Um, we also have Infinity Community Solutions joining us today, which is super exciting. Um, we've got Shelley, um, she's the general manager for Infinity, CEO. 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 <laughs> um, so she's going to be joining, I guess, just to give you a bit of a background in terms of direct service provision um, and tell you a bit more about what it's like in the day of life um, as a residential youth worker. So I guess today is a bit of a, as the slide says, um, a deep dive into residential youth work for those of you who potentially haven't worked in the industry before um, or who are wanting to know a little bit more. Um, this is our first ever episode of the Changemakers webinar series, so we appreciate you guys tuning in. Um, basically, we hope that today's session gives you some insight into what we do here at Edmund, um, but also, like I said, as to what it is in a day in the life of a residential youth worker. Um, before we jump into things any further, we would like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the Darawarra country, um, which is where we're hosting this webinar from today. Um, we pay our respects to their elders past and present and the Aboriginal elders of other communities who may be here today and recognises their continued connection to the land. Okay, um, a bit of an agenda for today. Um, we're going to give you an intro into Edmund Community Staffing Solutions, um, why I work with us, um, some job opportunities, we'll talk you through some work perks, we're going to talk you through our values. Um, and we're going to open up the floor, I guess, for any questions to hear if you guys um, yeah, have anything for us that we can help answer. All right. Um, so we're going to split today's session into two parts, as we've mentioned. So we'll do our Edmund piece and Shelley will be joining in to do her Infinity piece. Um, yeah. Anything else you want to add there? I pretty much covers it. Oh, good. <laughs> Hopefully by the end of it, everyone will want to be working with us. <laughs> that would be great. <laughs> All right, here we go. <laughs> um, currently, we are we're a national organisation. Um, currently, we provide staffing um, to areas of Queensland, right throughout Queensland, um, right throughout New South Wales. Um, we do some work in Victoria, and we do quite a bit of work in South Australia as well. Previously, we've also done work in Perth and Northern Territory. Um, we're not currently providing staff in those areas, but we have done in the past. Um, so we provide, I guess, community staffing in terms of um, on-hire workers. So um, if you are employed by Edmund, um, you are employed as an Edmund worker, but we provide you then to a, an organisation. So that could be disability services, it could be youth services, um, or it could be aged care. So specifically, obviously, we're talking about youth today. Um, we provide staffing to quite a lot, uh, quite some big organisations, I guess. We provide disability support workers to Endeavour in Queensland. Um, they're a large disability service yeah. provider. Um, and we do a lot of work within community community services in terms of youth work. So hence why Shelley's going to be joining us today as well. Um, you'll see some of the logos there. That's some of the organisations we work with. So Dynamic Community Care is another youth organisation in Queensland. We do a lot of work with EDL, 
um, who are a disability organisation in South Australia, um, Lighthouse Foundation, another disability service in South Australia, um, and many, many more guys. So we do have quite a, a big reach. Um, the benefits of that, I guess, in terms of if you do relocate, we can always look to redeploy you to other areas because we do have quite a large reach across the country. So I guess that's a bit of a perk for working in Edmund as well. <laughs> um, we have heaps of job opportunities at the moment. So we're gonna go through that through the slides. I'm gonna um, direct you to where you can find our current jobs as well um, so that you can have a bit of a read through about criteria and things as we go. So why work with Edmund? All of our Edmund positions start off as casual. However, we do have opportunities to transfer into permanent work with our host organisations. So there is career development. That's part of the package or potential package. We can be really flexible, um, part of being casual. We're able to work with you, work with your lifestyle needs and um, really just be flexible around your availability just to make the work-life balance work for you. Um, we do have a lot of work available. So there are regular shifts. Um, basically, you can work as much or as little as you would like. There, are, there is a lot of work. We also have a designated service coordinator. So you'll have that one point of contact who will be in charge of your roster, um, who you'll get to speak to about all of your employment needs. Um, and they will be able to provide you all the support that you need at Edmund Group. Um, in addition to that, we do have a WOW reward. So WOW Rewards is an app that you get access to for discounts. Uh, you get discounts at the shop, yep. cashback, all of this fun stuff, which we can walk you through if it's something that you are interested in as well. Yep. Um, I guess one of my favourite things about working at Edmund Group is our Edge app. So we have an app where you can update all your availability, um, accept shifts, decline shifts. It's just one central uh, one central platform, I guess. Platform, yeah. yeah. Um, of your your role basically. So that's really exciting, um, and it's just a really easily managed. Yeah. Yeah. It makes it easier for you, I guess. You can manage your own availability. You can let us know when you can work. Um, it saves us time because obviously we'll offer you shifts around when you are available um, rather than wasting time calling you when you're not. So it's just a super flexible app. It is specific to Edmund Edge. It's our own, we've created it. So um, yeah, it's something we're pretty proud of. Yeah. All right. So what can you expect as a residential youth worker? We obviously have a number of clients in Queensland that work in the youth space. So depending on your availability and your experience and what you're actually after will depend on what organisation you'll be allocated to. But basically, a lot. when you step on shift as a residential youth worker, every shift's going to be different. Generally speaking, you're in charge of household duties, taking the young people to school, um, doing grocery shopping, running a house, um, all of that fun stuff. But then there's also activities, going to the beach, going to theme parks, um, sometimes going away on holidays. So it's a whole range. Every day will be different as a residential youth worker. Yeah. And I'm hoping that when Shelley joins us, she'll be able to yeah. dive into that a little bit further on yeah. what you can expect. Um, I know Brooklyn mentioned it before, but I guess it's, it's key to mention here as well. Yes, you are employed by Edmund as a casual residential youth worker, um, but the opportunity to transition to a permanent role with the organisation that you're placed at um, is one that we really push and we, we really love to see happen. So um, if you do a really good job, obviously, um, there's always the opportunity to transition into a permanent role. So um, key to keep that in mind as Yeah, well. and even for you guys to test the water, see if yeah. you actually like the work yes. and enjoy what you're doing. Yes. And, um, it's just a really good opportunity. Yes, I agree. Okay. All right, so here at Edmund, our values underpin everything. Um, we've recently redeveloped our values and they've come down to these four that you can see on the screen. So be human, 
We encourage honesty and transparency through all communication. We create a safe and respectful environment, um, open for collaboration and welcome new ideas and different perspectives. Yeah. Be bold, have resilience, bravery, um, demonstrate curiosity and just continue to innovate and improve whatever you may be doing in whatever role you're doing. Um, we also have a cultural openness so we can receive feedback and give feedback as well. Be memorable. We take responsibility for how we make people feel. We give a damn. We want to exceed the expectation in every facet of our work and we build a really good, fun energy. Um, I know that I can vouch that one of the reasons why I've been with Edmund for a long time is the culture that we have in the office. Yeah. We're lucky to work with such a great group of people and it really does feel the down to you guys who will be working on the floor as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and the last one is achieve the extraordinary. So we believe anything is possible. We're willing to take risks um, for continued growth and learning and embracing opportunities. Cool. Yeah. Um, and I guess it's it's really key for us to emphasize the fact that these values are not only for us internally here in the office, we really make sure that these um, filter down to our support workers who are out there on the front line um, doing the, the real job every day that we take our hat off to each and every single day. So these values are not just for us here in the office, this is us at Edmund and we make sure that we really filter those down as well. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so this is our Edge app. So you can see on that phone there, that is the um, login page. When you have the app on your phone, your username and password. Um, as I mentioned earlier, this app was developed by us here at Edmund and it is linked specifically to our rostering platform. So it's not an app that you can use elsewhere with any other organisations that you might work with. Um, it has quite a lot of functionality which we've developed over time. Um, we really wanted to make sure it was an app that worked for you on, on ground level, on the floor, who are working, um, you know, on the front line doing different shifts, whatever time of day. We wanted to make sure that this app was really going to be flexible and beneficial, I guess, for you guys, not just something that worked for us here Monday to Friday. Um, so we are always contactable via phone. We have a 1300 number that is operational um, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. 365 days a year, quite literally. Um, we have an after hours team who are physically here in the office um, until 1 a.m. every day. Um, and so we are always contactable via phone. Um, I think that's one thing that, again, is really beneficial for frontline support workers who are out there doing you know, active night shifts and, and working different hours that we are here being able, you can contact us if you need us. Um, so we will always, um, be contacting. We also obviously use emails, so we can send your email. We can send your rosters via email. Um, we also push your rosters out to you via the Edge app. The app gives you the opportunity to accept or decline the shifts. Um, the app gives you the available uh, the option, sorry, to update your availability, which we mentioned earlier. And you can update your availability as far in advance as you like. If you know that um, you can only work, you know, afternoon shifts because that's what your your family life needs then you can update that for the rest of the year. So you don't have to literally do that every fortnight. If it's set and forget, then we will happily work around you. Um, so you can do that via the app as well. Um, the good thing about, I guess, shifts with admin is that we have the option, um, we work with our, part, our partnerships with our organisations. Um, they give us rosters in advance. So they tell us in advance, it could be up to a month in advance, that these are the shifts that they require filling. And we then filter those down to you guys as support workers. So that you have, um, I guess, the you know in advance what your what your roster is going to be, so that you can plan your life as well. Yeah, it goes um, back to that work life balance. Hundred percent. Well. Yeah, there's always emergency shifts that come up on top of that, but you will have the option to have rosters in advance, which works for everyone, as we know. Um, so that's what the screen mentions there: bulk shifts, um, which could be weekly, fortnightly, or even monthly in advance. Okay. Um, and then obviously we will contact you for emergency shifts on top of that. So um, whether it be the same day or for the next couple of days, um, we would either call you, email you, push it out by edge. You know, we work with you guys um, in terms of best methods of contact um, in, uh, to just to try and get you in for emergency shifts as they come up. 
um, record and diary in terms yeah, of. So we've got up and, um, up and coming app features where you'll be able to eventually update your shift notes, clock in and out of your shift. So we're always evolving that app, um, which is also really cool. Yeah, I think that basically covers it for Edge. Um, easy to use, like really user friendly. Um, yeah, and we, as I said, there's someone in the office, so if you ever get stuck trying to use the app, you can always give us a call because we use it internally as well. So we know what it is, we know how to do it. We can also log in as yourselves um, and, try and, and try and fix any bugs, I guess, if there was anything like that to occur. So yeah, that's a bit about the Edge app, um, a bit about rostering and a bit about accepting shifts with Edge. All right. Skills and qualifications. Skills and qualifications. So we do require a few things for you to have before coming on to work with us. Um, so specifically for the youth sector in Queensland, we do need you to have your P2 license, driver's license, and your own car. Um, we need you to be legible for a blue card. For a paid blue card, we can put those that paperwork through and organise that for you just as long as you're legible for that. Um, we need a current first aid and CPR, um, a, just your passport, birth certificate, all of that identification, um, documentation, but also most importantly is being enrolled in a recognised qualification. So We've got a whole list of qualifications if you need to confirm if your qualification will be recognised to join us, please reach out. You can pop it in the chat and we're happy to help you out. Um, but yeah, the really good thing about that is that we have a kickstart program to, I guess, really guide people on coming on board with us who are quite new to the sector. So. so. <laughs> I was too slow. <laughs> so yeah, our kickstart program um, is great for people who want to break into the industry. Definitely. Did you want to talk to us a little bit about the program? Yeah, I'll give you a bit of a rundown on the kickstart program. So um, we have just rolled this out um, across Queensland for some Queensland students. So basically our kickstart program provides eligible, eligible students with the opportunity to gain paid work experience. Um, with our community service providers, so with actual service providers in the industry. All right. The program gives you a pathway to develop your experience um, and to work with some of Queensland's leading um, youth service organisations um, while earning a competitive wage at the same time. As an admin employee, you'll get access to all of our work perks, which we mentioned earlier on, um, and you'll have the backing of a supportive team um, and your point of contact here in terms of a service coordinator at admin as well. Um, our flexible working arrangements make it possible for you to secure work that fits your own study load and your course timetable. So the Kickstart program is really developed for those that are studying that relevant qualification um, to get you into the, in, into the industry and to get you paid experience. Is there anything else for Kickstart? No, and look, even if you weren't enrolled in a particular qualification, reach out to our team. We've, like Taylor said, we've got people that are able to guide you and point you in the right direction on what you actually need to be enrolled into. We've also got some really great contacts in Queensland as well um, as in regards to service providers that put you guys through qualification. So even if you don't have those enrolments, reach out to us and we can always guide you in the right direction and take you through the process. Yeah, definitely. Um, there is information on our website. You'll see the link there, um, FNCSS um, forward slash for students, and you're going to find all the information in relation to the Kickstart program there as well. So feel free to jump on and have a look at that. Um, have, while we talk about our website, it'd be really good for you guys to jump on. We've got some really cool resources on there, and we've got some blogs from um, our support workers across the country. So. You'll be able to see videos um, from some youth workers. There's videos on there from, about, from some of our disability support workers. Um, they give you a real honest insight into what their journey with Edmund has been and into what it is in the day of um, the life of a support worker um, in youth, in disability. So I really encourage you guys to jump on and have a look at those. Um, I can't play the videos for you through this because you won't hear any sound, unfortunately. 
but go ahead and jump on our website because there's some great content on there. Yeah, absolutely recommend. It's really hard. It fills my heart as well, like yeah. hearing the stories that our, our staff share with us as well on what a day looks like as a residential youth worker. So I would highly recommend you jump on and have a look at a couple of those videos. All right, we've got some questions coming through, guys. So um, I guess this leads us to the end anyway, where we're going to invite you guys to ask us questions. All right. All right, Shelley, let us know if that works for you. Thanks to Edmund for inviting me um, to talk about working in um, community services and, and like particularly in the youth work field, I, I guess, um, in home care specifically, I guess, is my area of um you know partnership with Edmund and um you know start, I just want to start off by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land on which we meet and pay respects to elders past present and emerging um and and just to um you know jump into my little bit is is I guess what I was hoping to cover today is just a little bit about um infinity community solutions our approach to our work and our guiding principles, our approach to therapeutic care, and really getting then a little bit into the role of, of what we call a care practitioner and, um, and then some finally just some career pathways that, that people might want to think about in terms of their, um, their, their journey moving forward. So just a little bit of background about Infinity Community Solutions. So we're a reasonably young organisation, just recently turned five. Um, the organisation was founded by myself and uh, my co-founding director, Annalee Clark. Both Annalee and myself have had long-term careers in child protection and out-of-home care, uh, both in government and non-government. And um, I guess that led us through, you know, we, uh, myself, I, I started off in a very direct care role at, in, you know, a long time ago when, when people were actually employed as couples in this work. So myself, my husband um, and our family lived in a residential care 10 days on and four days off. So, you know, I guess one of the, the things that has driven Infinity is, is that um, true commitment to doing good work and and I guess not not to just do the same old work that anyone else is doing so a lot of what drives uh, infinity as an organization is, is the opportunity to build a boutique uh, secular social purpose organization so all of the work that we do is um, truly driven by outcomes for people so uh, not just a placement, you know, if this is, you know, just been actually at a workforce forum in South Australia talking about the challenges of attracting people to this sort of work and partially one of those challenges that is acknowledged is the lack of visibility of our, our sector and people not necessarily understanding the work that we do and also some of the myths about the work that we do. So, you know, particularly getting into understanding this is a true career choice and and also understanding that it's quite challenging work. It, it, it's definitely, um, you know, we, we are not looking for people who, 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 who don't want to sort of embrace the therapeutic nature of the work. So it's definitely not childminding. Um, you know, the work is, is truly uh, driven by therapeutic change for young people. So, um, yeah, and in that regard, you know, there's many, many challenges that the work presents, but also many really positive attributes of the work where, you know, like I said, from our, our whole makeup of our organisation is about being outcomes driven. So as I move through a little bit more, I think you'll you'll see the great opportunity that there is in this work to really get alongside young people and their families and see them grow and and hopefully even move out of the out of home care sector. So um, just a little bit more about Infinity as an organisation. 
Yeah. Like I think um, for those of you who are interested in a little bit more information, you know, I encourage you to go and have a look at our website and rather than me sort of read through our values, um, what, you know, verbatim, I think, you know, it's, it, it's safe to, to sort of summarise that, you know, we as a new organisation, we have the luxury of taking, you know, the 25 plus year journey that we've had in much larger, perhaps some would call more mainstream organisations, faith-based organisations. We, we've had the great opportunity and wonderful contribution from those organisations to our careers to really develop our model of practice and our thinking and approach to the work but then also the great opportunity to hopefully learn from all those 25 years of what didn't quite meet the mark to develop an organisation that's a little bit more client-centric and, and adaptable. So, like I said at the start, we're, we're, as an organisation, we're, we're not really interested in just doing the same old, same old work. Uh, so we, in terms of our you know, connection to living out being boutique and personal, most of our services are designed, you know, so the actual program on the ground is all about being put around specific needs of the young people that have been placed in our care. Um, and so from that point of view, we're able to do very innovative work and, and really strive towards achieving outcomes. So, you know, the quieting principles, I probably will um, read through these ones because I think they're really important and they say a lot about who infinity is. But, you know, our guiding principles are working in a way that treats life outcomes, health and well-being of those in our care as our highest priority. So certainly choosing to work with infinity, I think, is we're looking definitely for people who want to make that commitment to the children and young people that are in their care and really work towards their outcome. So to do that, we structure our organisation so that it works in the in the best interest of the greatest number of our clients. So, you know, these, these really highlight some of the challenges of the work um, in the sense that there are, you know, not shying away from the fact that sometimes there are compromises in order to provide a service for the greatest number of people, it actually is about choosing not to provide a service for some of the people. And, and that they're really hard dilemmas and, and something for people to go into this work with their eyes wide open. Excuse me one sec. <coughs> um, but it's really important to understand that there are many ethical challenges and and many, um, you know, many soul searching moments where you really have to think about, you know, the the, the choices that you're making and 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 how that impacts the the young people in your care. And and sort of an, another point about that is also understanding that this is highly regulated and supervised work. So. As an organisation, you know, we're respondent to several layers of, of external accountability and which means that it's extremely important to understand the multifaceted nature of the work. So as I said at the start, you know, this is not work that's about child minding. Um, it, it truly is a professional role in which you have to balance the needs between the caring efforts that you put towards young people with having high levels of accountability. So record keeping and, and, and being able to really demonstrate that we have acted out to, according to the policies and procedures of our organisation. And so, you know, in terms of our partnership with Edmund, this is something where the partnership really rubber hits the road in the sense that while contractors uh, might be employed by Edmund, they're very responsible to be able to be accountable to our internal policies as well. So, uh, and in that regard, I think Edmund and Infinity work very closely together to make sure that in people that are working in our 
sites have that opportunity to be supported by both Infinity and the admin support coordinators, to, the service coordinators to make sure that they understand the expectations that people have of them in the role and that they have every opportunity to be successful in the role and understand the requirements. Because, you know, we're only ever as good as the last, I guess, the, 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 the worst thing that we ever did because, you know, we have those external measures that come along and, and actually evaluate, have we actually lived out all of those things that we said we did? So what people will, will, will experience in the work is a high, a fairly high level of accountability and, and supervision of their work, which is quite, com I think, very important to highlight is quite confronting to some people. And, and, and again, another one of those dilemmas in the role where we talk about the need to be very relationship focused in our approach with young people, but equally and, and as, as demanding an aspect of the role is that paperwork and, and the administration side of the role where, you know, it, because of the high focus on accreditation, basically if we don't write down the things that we do, they may as well have never happened. So I know that's something that people often talk to us about when they're new to the sector is a bit of a, um, a shock to them in that they think that they perceive the role as, as being about that direct care, which it very much is, but the admin side of the role is sometimes um, something that people weren't anticipating. So just really being able to understand that the role is a balance of caring gestures and, and, and being able to work therapeutically with young people, but an equally uh, important aspect of the role is really strong recording of the work that you're doing and, and reporting the work that you're doing. So that, that's often sometimes a bit of a surprise to people. Um, and, you know, just in specifically in relation to our approach to residential care and, and building on what I've been talking about, I guess, Infinity has a really strong belief in residential care being a model of intervention. So you would perhaps hear people talking, if you've ever been around residential care before or you've read anything about um, residential care, you probably often see it referred to as a placement uh, or, you know, um, you know that, that's sort of the out-of-home care terminology, if you like, being young people being placed in our care. or and, it, and, and that is true. That's still very much a part of it. But we, we see residential care not as a destination for young people to be par parked in and forgotten, uh, but yet actually rather it's a great opportunity for young people to be in a supportive model of care that is actually able to help think about where they're where they are right now, what their unmet needs are, what their need for trauma recovery is, and how we then are able to pull a program together around them to take them from where they are right now to where they want to be in in the next little while of their their life and and particularly with the view to helping them develop uh, you know, coping mechanisms and adaptive skills and life skills to be able to face the world that's ahead of them, which is, you know, a big unknown for many young people at, at the stage of life that we have encountered them. And, and more importantly, helping them to reconnect with family or other significant people that have been in their lives over time uh, and being able to reconnect them and to really facilitate strong connections for them that are going to live beyond their time in care. So it's very important to think about the child's journey in life and, and being focused on understanding that when they turn 18, they're no longer in care and they've got to start being, um, you know, on their own. And so a really big part of our job is about helping them develop the skills that they're going to need for life to be able to truly reach their full potential. Um, and, you know, obviously how we do that is helping our staff. So, again, a, a really big part of our partnership with Edmund is making sure that all of the people that work in our services have access to as 
you know, really good training and particularly around trauma-informed care. So, um, you know, in, in both Queensland and South Australia where we have services, we offer a, a full um, pre-service assessment centre which helps people become job ready and, and then um, post placement in our services we have an ongoing regime of training which is a mix of small sessions in staff meetings going over topical areas that that would be helpful to people in their jobs versus larger scale training that are available in both paid and unpaid formats um, so just being the difference if, is if it's a required training for the job it, it's paid training and if it's something that might be a bit more informative but not essential, it might be something where Infinity offers to make the training available, but it might be something that people can come along to in their own time or use our online library to extend their knowledge. We have a lot of topics that are available to people online that they can choose to, to log into and do in their own time. So there's a lot of really good opportunities to enhance your skills. The other really important I touched on before is about being relationship focused. So a, a really strong component of our care model is about building relationships with young people and, and really, um, you know, using our relationships as a vehicle for change. Um, and then finally, I think one of the really strong aspects of our approach to care, which sort of ties all of that together, is, is working with families. So when we place young people in our services, we're not only focusing on the young person that's placed in our care, but we're also working with their family in a holistic way to help, you know, address some of the issues that might have led them to being in care. So I guess that's one of the really, um, we often work with siblings, so working with them in terms of building stronger sibling relationships being able to reconnect with family, being able to work towards reunification, hence why I say residential care is not a destination. So we're always trying to look at what's the trajectory of the young person's life and how do we connect them something to something that's bigger than, than where we're at right now. So um, I guess that one of the really great aspects of working in the partnership that Infinity and Edmund have is, is being able to do that more interesting work where it's not just like I said it, it's very much not childminding and very much uh, a model of intervention and and a therapeutic approach to care so you know I think it's a, a really great um, way to develop as a professional in the out-of-home care sector and and I think you know reflecting on my own journey in the sector what I would certainly say is that Working for years in frontline residential care has meant that those experiences I often draw back on as, as really key formative things in my career where I learnt a lot about the, the things that face young people and the things that are important to young people that even now as a CEO of an organisation still shape how I would make decisions about policies and, and about the things that we offer in our care models. So, you know, I don't think you can underestimate how important a starting your career in residential care can be in terms of being ready for future roles that you might want to take on as you grow and develop. So I'm just grabbing my next slide. So I hope I am. Um, yeah, so the role of a care practitioner. So, um, you know, I guess as I, I think I've sort of covered a lot of this as we've been chatting, but the role, a care practitioner is really responsible for the overall support of children and young people that are placed with us. And, and in that, it's, it's really a, a mix of meeting the daily care needs of children and young people and working to ensure their physical and emotional well-being, um, which you know I definitely was just talking about in depth about how that actually plays out. And you know, it's the really practical things about um, <laughs> um, you know being able to connect young people to experiences 
and and being able to help them learn the skills to navigate the world. And I think it's very important work that cannot be underestimated. But, you know, I, I can't help but touch on one of the absolute cornerstones of the most important things that people need to bring to the role, and that's the ability to commit to the model of practice and, and to use the, the, the organisation's policies and procedures and work structures to provide a level of consistency. Because I think for any of you who have ever experienced a maybe a separated family and, and, and thinking about maybe, you know, times that people have had shared care between their mum and their dad's home, and you think perhaps if you've ever experienced that and reflecting on how difficult that would be, for some kids but imagine that you're placed in a, a home with no family and and other kids that aren't your siblings and and your main source of adult care is, is a group of people that change every you know sometimes eight hours sometimes every 24 hours and imagine if we all brought our own um thoughts and values um you know, to the role and, and to the to the care setting and imagine what that would result in for children um, that they've, they've almost got like, um, you know, somewhere like six parents all telling them different things. So, you know, a really key important part of this role is being able to, to, a, to the best degree that we're all as humans able to do, which is not, not easy, but is to check some of your own values at the door and your own parenting belief systems at the door and really take on the professional role of adopting the, um, the organisation's model of practice. focus on consistency for children because that that's you know what we know about children is that they do their best even though they push back and even though they don't like boundaries and limits what we know is that kids thrive in environments where those boundaries and limits are fair and consistent so that's a really important aspect of the role and finally, I just wanted to touch on the career pathways that exist in, in certainly in our organisation, but I think broadly in the sector. Like, as I said, I think, you know, I honestly couldn't say more strongly that I think starting your career in residential care is such a, an exciting foundational piece where you could, um, you know, where you'll get the opportunity to learn uh, about working in child protection, about working with children and young people, about working with families in ways that will stay with you for the rest of your professional career. And, you know, I think the, you know, whilst the sector is really trying to professionalise and focus on qualifications, there's still, you know, great opportunities to enter, to use residential care as an entryway into um, the community services sector so being able to, you know, do your qualification while you're working, um, being able to get experience under your belt, um, paid experience under your belt, and being able to put that to, towards your qualification via RPL strategies, you know, really helps to start laying a, 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 a you know, a pathway for building on your career. So, you know, I think whether you want to stay focused on, um, you know, care delivery and casework, um, you know, I think there's wonderful opportunities to take your cert for forward into a diploma um, and, and then being able to build on that even further into a, a degree qualification. And certainly a lot of the work, I chair a national alliance of providers and Lots of the work that we're doing on opportunities in this space is really trying to build pathways for people to do full degrees in the workplace and, and having an opportunity to really professionalise in to whether you want to remain a youth worker and, and, and do direct work with young people, 
or whether you want to lead into leadership roles because I think that's another really strong pathway for people that are interested in building a, a leadership career is that, you know, most people that I know have, have come through the ranks of, of being a direct worker. Most of our residential care coordinators who are the immediate support and supervisors that, that in this role you would be supported by, I, I don't think I could think of one of them that hasn't been a direct care worker in their early career. So there are really strong pathways through to, um, you know, through to roles in leadership. Um, and like I said, I myself, I, I absolutely started off completely unqualified. My, my first interaction in, in the out-of-home care sector was actually as a foster carer and my career was as a debt collector. <laughs> so, you know, I think that you can... You can definitely uh, use residential care as a great opportunity to build a long-term career in this sector. And Infinity and, and, and Edmund, through our partnership, I think, you know, I, I know I'm biased, but I think it would be, uh, you know, a great opportunity for people to really take up a pathway into this sector. So, yeah, that probably brings me to the end of my little spiel. Thank you so much, Shelley. That was such a great insight, especially from someone with your experience. So really, we really appreciate your time to come on and talk about all of that today as well. We might wrap it up there. And look, thank you everyone so much for joining us. Thank you, Shelley, for joining our first episode today. It's been so great having that insight from your end. Yeah. Um, yeah, we encourage everybody to please apply for roles if it's if it's what you're interested in in the Kickstart program. Reach out to someone at Edmund, and we will absolutely take you through the process and give you any information that you need. And hopefully, it won't be long until we see you guys working with us. Yeah, thank you guys for joining. Really appreciate it.